Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 4th grade concept of decimals, specifically how we can represent them, and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So we have two squares on the screen, and they are each represented into 10 individual sections. And you also see the picture of a, a dime, either the front or the back. The picture of uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt is on the front of the dime, and it is worth 10 cents. And the reason that's going to be important for us to remember is that we are dealing with a decimal point. And we're going to be dealing with uh, the decimal point called the tenth. Not the ten, but the tenth. And whenever you see a th on the end of a place value place, that means it's a decimal. It is behind zero. So let's say we were to uh, build a number, and let's say we have ten dollars, and then we have ten cents. So you see this first spot right after the decimal point. That is the tenths place. And each tenth is worth, uh, think of it like a dime. It takes 10 dimes to make a full dollar, and so it makes 10 tenths to make a whole. So how can we represent that with two different place value demonstrations here? So let's look at, let's look at this right here, 0 0.3. So if we were to name that, we're going to call that in word form, 3 tenths. And so all we're going to do is we're just going to shade in three of these little bars. Now, it doesn't really matter exactly which ones you do, but typically they're all together and they go from left to right. Other types of fractions, sometimes you spread them out a little bit just to make it a little bit tricky, but not necessarily when we're looking at tenths or hundredths. So this is going to be worth three tenths. And if I wanted to write this in expanded notation, I would say 3 times its place value, 3 times 0, 1. And then we could do the same thing with something slightly larger. So 7 tenths is going to go all the way over here. I'm just going to take some big shape right here, make sure it goes all the way across. So when we're looking at tenths, just think of it like a dime. It takes 10 tenths to make a whole. And so this isn't quite a whole yet. This is just 7 out of 10. And so we can represent it like this, 7 times 0 0.1. The fractional form would also be 7 tenths. And this one would be 3 tenths. Now let's look at hundredths. So when we're looking at hundredths, an easy way to think of hundredths, and you hear that THS at the end, is to think of a penny. So we have a picture of the front and back of a penny here with Abraham Lincoln and the Lincoln Memorial on the back. So it takes 100 pennies. So we'll say 100 pennies equals one dollar. And so it takes 100 hundredths to make a whole. And so if we look at this picture over here on the left, you see a hundredths grid, and you see that each row has 10 across. So it's got 10 this way, uh, side to side, horizontally. And then it's got 10 vertically, up and down. That's where your hundredths grid come from. It's 10 times 10. So if you look at each column here, one thing you need to remember that each column represents a tenth. Even though each tenth is broken up into 10 parts, Look at this, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got ten tenths. So you should think of ten tenths as the same as a whole, just like one hundred one hundredths is the same as a whole. So take a look at this. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six full tenths. So if I wanted to say six tenths, that's going to represent my first six columns. But then I've got this little one left over right there. So that's where that one comes in. That's that hundredths. So really, uh, this is my six tenths. As you can see, I've got ten uh, in each of these columns here. And I've got six full columns. And I've got this one little tiny one left over. And that's going to be my hundredths. So if I wanted to represent this, I can also say 61 over 100. 